The Blessed Eucharist, Our Greatest Treasure, by Father Michael Miller. Chapter 14, Relating to the Real Presence, Part 2. Having received information from many persons of the wonderful occurrence which I am now going to briefly relate, says St. Alphonsus in his book Visits to the Blessed Sacrament, I endeavored to collect evidence sufficient to enable me to publish an account of it, and I first obtained a full relation of the fact written by a priest of the same town who was one of the eyewitnesses of the miracle. But not satisfied with this, I read myself the authentic process which was drawn up by the Archiepiscopal Court of Naples by order of the eminent Cardinal Sersale, the present archbishop. The process is very long, consisting of 364 pages, a most careful investigation into the facts, having been made by the officers of the court from the evidence of many priests and laypersons, all of whom, in perfect agreement, made their depositions on oath. It happened on the morning of the 28th of January, in the past year 1772, at a place called San Pietro a Paterno in the Diocese of Naples, that the tabernacle of the parish church in which the Blessed Sacrament was reserved was found open and that the two ciboriums, a large and a small one, containing many particles, had been taken away. For several days the whole neighborhood was in the greatest distress and grief, and though the most diligent search was made, no tidings could be obtained, either of the ciboriums or of the sacred particles. At length, on Thursday, the 18th of February, a certain youth, Giuseppe Orifice, of about 18 years old, as he was passing in the evening near the property of the Duke of Gortelle, saw a number of lights which had the appearance of bright stars, the following evening he saw the same thing, and, on coming home, he told his father what he had seen. His father, however, would not believe him. On the following day, about an hour before sunrise, the father was passing by the same spot, with Giuseppe and his brother Giovanni, a child of eleven years, who, turning to his father, said, See, father, the lights of which Giuseppe spoke to you yesterday evening, and you would not believe him. On the evening of the same day, the same boys, on coming home, again saw the lights in the same place. Dr. Giolamo Giorino, the confessor of Giuseppe Orofice, was then informed of it, who, in company with his brother, Don Diego, also a priest, went to the spot where the lights had been seen, and meanwhile sent for Orofice, who, on coming there with his brother and a person called Tommaso Piccino, again saw the lights, but at that time the priests saw nothing. On the evening of Monday the 23rd of February, Orofice returned to the spot with Piccino and a man named Carlo Marotta, and met on the road two strangers, who stopped and asked them what those many lights were, which they had just distinctly seen, and which twinkled like stars. They replied that they did not know, and taking leave of the strangers, they ran in haste to mark the spot where they had seen the lights. As soon as they had marked the spot, which was distant a few steps from the hedge, and in which it was a popular tree higher than the rest of the trees, they went to find the two priests already mentioned told them what had occurred and returned all together to the spot. When they were all there, with the child of five years, nephew to the two priests, the child cried out, See, there are the lights which look like two candles. At the same moment, Orofice saw these two lights and said they shone like two stars. Carlo and Tommaso also saw them, and three other children of Signor Giornino, close to the popular the poplar already mentioned. After this, they heard the shouting of many people who, from a stack of straw which was on the property, were begging the priest to come and see in the stack a great light in the appearance of a flame. In the meantime, a woman named Lucia Morota threw herself with her face to the ground on the spot where the light was seen. The priest and many other persons ran up, and having lifted up the woman, commenced to dig the ground. But when they found nothing, but then they found nothing. The two brothers, Giuseppe Orfice, with Tommaso Piccino and Carlo Morota, then returned to the town, and going along the Strada Regia, they heard the cries of those who had remained on the spot. Going back there, Piccino fell suddenly upon his face, and after a few steps, Giuseppe felt himself pushed forward on the shoulders, and he also at once fell to the ground. In the same way, and at the same moment, the other two, Carlo Morota and Giovanni, Giuseppe's brother, also fell, and all four felt their heads wounded, as if they had received a severe blow with a stick. Having got up, they went forward a few steps, and both Giuseppe and also Carlo, Tommaso, and Giovanni saw a brilliant light, as of the sun coming forth from beneath the poplar tree, and they all four saw rising out of this light, to about four or five feet in height, a dove, which was almost as brilliant as the light itself. The dove, however, gliding down into the earth at the foot of the poplar from which it came out, disappeared, as also did the light. What the dove signified is not known, but it appears certain that it was something supernatural, and all the persons already mentioned gave evidence of the fact upon oath before the vicar general of Naples. 
After this, remaining in the same place, they all cried out, See, there are the lights. And going on their knees, they began to seek for the sacred particles. While Pacino was scooping out the earth with his, with his hands, they saw one particle come out white as paper. They then sent to call the priests. Don Diego Guarino came, and kneeling down, he took the sacred particle and put it in, in a white linen handkerchief amid the tears and devotion of all the people who wept bitterly. He then began to search more carefully, and having removed some more earth, he saw a group of about forty particles appear, which had not lost their whiteness, although they had been buried for nearly a month from the time they were stolen. They were placed in the same handkerchief, and the earth in which they were found was also removed. It being now rumored about, other priests of the place came to the spot, bringing with them a ciborium, cota, stole, canopy, and torches. In the meantime, a priest and a gentleman went to Monsignor the Vicar General to know what was to be done. An order came that the particles should be carried processionally to the church. They did so, and arrived at the church about half past eleven at night, when the particles were placed in the tabernacle. This took place on the night of the 24th of February. The people were much consoled, but not fully so, because the greater part of the particles, as was supposed, were still wanting. But on the evening of the following Tuesday, the 25th, a small light, but very brilliant, was seen in the same place as at first. By many persons, country people, gentlemen, as also by the priest Don Diego Guarino and Don Giuseppe Littner, who wrote for me an account of the whole affair, as I mentioned at the beginning. This priest, being much terrified, pointed to a mustard plant which was growing there, and cried out, O oh Jesus, O oh Jesus, look at the light there, look at it! Upon which the others also saw a most dazzling light, which rose about a foot and a half from the ground, formed itself on the top into the figure of a rose. Giuseppe, or Fitze, who was there affirmed that the light was so brilliant that his eyes remained for some time dazzled and dimmed. They began therefore to seek the remainder of the particles in that place, but found none. But on the evening of the following day, the 26th of February, a number of lights were seen around the stack of straw by the three cavalry soldiers of the regiment called Borbone, Pescale de San Angelo of the Diocese of Atri and Pene, Giuseppe Lanzano and Angela di Costanzo of Azzera were all examined before the Archiepiscopal Court. These deposed before Monsignor, the Vicar General, at, that they were riding round the royal villa of Caserta, where His Majesty the King then resided. They saw on the property above mentioned several lights like shining stars. These are the very words of the soldiers as taken down in the process. Moreover, on the same evening of the 26th, Signor de Ferdinand, Fernando Ham, a gentleman of Prague and Bohemia, Chancellor and Secretary for Letters to the Embassy of His Imperial and Royal Apostolic Majesty, was returning from the city of Caserta at about nine at night along the Strada Regia, near to the above-mentioned property. He got down from his carriage to go and see the place where he had heard the stolen particles had been found two days before. On arriving there, he found many persons, and among them the priest Don Giuseppe Lintner, with whom he was acquainted, who told him the whole story, both of the sacrilege and of the miraculous discovery of the particles. Signor Ham, after having heard the priest, related that he also, eight or nine days before, on the 17th or 18th of the month, not having then heard either of the particles that had been stolen or of the lights that had not had been seen, was passing by this place about nine at night, and that he saw a great number of lights, amounting to about a thousand, and at the same time a number of persons who were standing in silence and with devotion round the lights. Being much frightened at what he saw, he asked the driver what those lights were, he replied that perhaps they were accompanying the Most Holy Viaticum to some sick person. No, replied Signor Ham, that cannot be, otherwise we should at least hear the bells. Hence he suspected that these lights were the effect of some diabolical sorcery, and so much the more as the horse had stopped, it would not go on a step. He therefore made the driver get down, but it was impossible to make the horse go on. It trembled all over and foamed at the mouth. At length, after many attempts, the horse, drawn away as by force out of the road, which led to the ground, set off with such speed that the driver cried out, O oh Jesus, what will come of this? And so Signor de Ferdinando returned to Naples, seized with great fear. He himself deposed the whole of this in the Archiepiscopal Court, as may be read in the process of page 60, and so on. On the evening of, the th on, of Thursday, the 27th, at about 7 o'clock, Giuseppe Orofece and Carlo Marotta went to the place where was the stack of straw, which they found had been burned by the priests Don Girolamo, Giorino, and Giuseppe Lintner, in order that they might more easily search for the missing particles. They found also Giuseppe Pis Piscopo, Carmine Esposito, and Palmiro Novello, prostrate on the ground and weeping, because they had seen a little light appearing and then disappearing before them several times. When Orofice heard this, he knelt down and began to recite the acts of faith, hope, and charity, 
When he had finished, he returned with the others to see what the light was, which, according to the deposition of Orofice, rose ab up about four fingers from the earth, and then disappeared, as it were, in the ground. After this, having put a mark over the place where the light had appeared, so as not to be mistaken, Orofice and Morota went to inform the priest Don Girolamo Giorino, who came immediately to the place, and found many persons kneeling there. He began to search with care about the ground on which the mark had been placed. At this moment, many persons again saw the light, and Giorino, who did not see it, made the sign of the cross upon the ground, and ordered his brother Giuseppe to scoop out the earth on which the stack of straw had stood, on the left of the cross, with a pickaxe which he had in his hand, but he found nothing. However, just as they were thinking of digging in another part, Giuseppe Orofice, who was on his knees all the time, put his hand on the ground, and finding that it was soft and yielding, mentioned it to the Reverend Giorino, who, taking a knife from his brother, struck it in, stuck it into the ground, on the spot which had been marked with the cross. And, when it was at its depth, depth, he heard a noise as if several hosts united together were broken. He drew the knife out of the ground, and with it a little ball of earth to which he saw many particles were attached. Struck with fear at what he saw, he cried out in astonishment, Oh! 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 And then fainted away, so that, as he himself deposed, his sight failed him, and losing all power over himself, the knife with a ball of earth and particles fell from his hand. As soon as Giorino recovered his senses, he put the particles in a white linen handkerchief, covered them up, and laid them in the hole in which they had been found, for on account of the trembling which had come over him, and especially in the arms, he was not able to stand upright. The parish priest, being informed of what had happened, came quickly to the spot, where he found all kneeling before this hidden treasure, and having taken better information of the event, he went back to his church, and sent a canopy, veil, a number of wax tapers, and a chalice, in which the sacred particles were put. The assistants spread the veil over a little table covered with silk, on which the blessed sacrament reposed. Round this a number of persons knelt with lighted torches, and many people arrived, not only from the town, but also from the surrounding villages with their priests, all of whom shed tears of tender devotion. In the meantime, the priest Lindner and Signor Giuseppe Giorino went off to find Monsignor the Vicar General, and returned about ten o'clock, with orders to carry in procession the particles that had been found to the parish church of San Pietro a Paterno. They did so, and along the way they all sang, praising and thanking Almighty God. As soon as they arrived at the church, benediction was given with the chalice in the midst of the tears and cries of devotion of the whole people, who could not leave off weeping and thanking our Lord for the great consolation they had received. We read in the history of olden times of many such like prodigies in confirmation of the truth of the Most Holy Sacrament. I myself, in my history of heresies, have related many examples on this matter in the time of the impious Wycliffe, who was the first of modern heretics to deny the truth of this venerable, sac venerable sacrament. At that time, Almighty God was pleased to work many miracles to confound their incredulity, which I have inserted in the book just mentioned. Nevertheless, there are not wanting certain critical spirits who altogether refuse to believe these ancient accounts and say, but who saw them? Now, if such a one should doubt the fact which I have now related, in which was, a, was proved with such exactness in the Archiepiscopal Court of Naples, he can easily certify himself of the truth of it by going to the town of San Pietro a Paterno, which is not far from the city, where he will find many laypersons and ecclesiastics who will assure him what that they beheld with their own eyes the prodigies here related. For the rest, let others say what they please. For my own part, I hold the fact to be more than certain, and therefore I wish to make it known by publishing an account of it. It is true that the miracle here described does not call for any other than mere human faith. Nevertheless, of all such facts grounded on human faith, I do not know if there be one that is more deserving of belief than this that I have related, considering the extreme care with which the information was taken by the Neapolitan court, in evidence not by credulous women, but of seventeen men, lay and ecclesiastics who judicially deposed on oath all that they had seen with their own eyes. All these circumstances, which are so many marks of truth, make the fact more than morally certain. Hence I hope that all those who read this account will not be dis disinclined to believe it, but will do what they can to make it known for the glory of the most holy sacrament of the altar. <laughs>